Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you how I lost my belly fat so that you can lose your belly fat because I get asked this a lot. I always get asked, but how did you lose the big apron belly? How did you lose all of that belly fat? I really want to lose my belly fat. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in today's video. I'm going to go through and tell you exactly my secret to losing my big belly. <laughs> so I hope you guys find this video helpful. If you do, I would really, really appreciate it if you left a like. It takes you a second to do. You just click a button. It's free. And it really helps me out. It helps out the video. And I really appreciate it. So if you could do that for me, I love you guys. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing and click the bell button. Join the family here on YouTube. I make loads of videos to do with weight loss, health, fitness, and my what I eat in a day videos everything I basically share my journey because I have lost 120 pounds I used to be morbidly obese I weighed 269 pounds and in January 2020 I started my weight loss journey I'm basically just share it all on YouTube I share what I've learned I share my tips and we have an amazing community over here just focusing on health wellness and just you know we all support each other so if you want to become part of the family we would love to have you so subscribe and click the bell button so you get a notification every time i upload and feel free to leave comments down below i love to chat with you guys in the comments so leave a comment down below and say hello and yeah let's just get on and i'll tell you exactly what i did yeah the secret to losing the belly fat so let's just get straight to the point yeah I'm going to tell you something that you probably might not want to hear. If you clicked on this video, you might have wanted me to tell you that there was a magic waist trainer or a specific exercise or a specific pill or a specific medication or cream or it's just something, right? Something very that you might not have heard before, right? You, you, you're probably hoping, maybe. Maybe if you're already a subscriber, you, you already know that's not going to be the case, but if you're not, yeah, and this is the first video of mine you're watching, maybe you would have thought, hopefully, you have that little hope, like maybe she'll tell me something I ain't heard before, right? I know, because I used to be the one who would type that in, how to lose belly fat, and I'd be like looking for the secret, right? The secret is there's no secret apart from eating in a calorie deficit, right? <laughs> I know you probably didn't want to hear that, yeah, but you need to eat less than your body burns. A calorie deficit is basically... You basically use a certain amount of energy every single day and you require a certain amount of energy. So if you eat less energy than what your body burns, so less food, less calories, then you will burn body fat. And the truth of the matter is you cannot spot reduce fat. No matter what anyone tells you online, you can't choose where your body takes fat from. Your body will use fat for energy when you're in a calorie deficit and it doesn't particularly choose, like you can't make it choose where to pull the fat from it all does depend on your genetics as well so some people store body fat more in their upper body some people store it more in their midsection hips buttocks lower body like it all depends on the person so for me i notice that when i start to lose body fat i lose it on my like my upper body first so i'll lose it here and my arms and my back and then it will gradually like come down on these body fat here and then it kind of stays around the midsection and then I'll lose it from like the lower part of my body and then I normally carry like the last bit of my fat to go will be around my midsection so like I think it's quite common for women so it's like around the hip area the back of the legs the buttocks all of all of that area the lower tummy but what you need to do and what I did is just persevere with the calorie deficit long enough for your body to eventually take the fat from there so with my lower stomach obviously i had like the apron belly basically that was literally one of the last places my body fat like went from like obviously it did gradually go down like it didn't just like my belly didn't stay the same size the whole way through my journey and if you do want to see pictures from how my body looked start to finish start to finish you know what i mean uh, through my weight loss um and see how it gradually moved down i do have a video how i'll leave it linked down below as well but it was basically where i go through pictures showing how my body changed throughout my journey and just show like a realistic view of how long it took for my body to change and how long it took for my belly to go down because i do show belly pictures in there and stuff as well but yeah that's that's literally it you just need to persevere with a calorie deficit and if you don't know how to get into a calorie deficit i'll tell you that now so basically you need to find out how many calories you need at maintenance and the best way to do that is by going on well the best way to actually do that is to track what you eat through a calorie counting app or anything something like that like my fitness power if you don't know how to use my fitness power 
I do have a video tutorial going through how to use my fitness pal. But you basically track, try not to change what you're eating throughout the week and track everything you eat normally. And then you'll see how many calories you're eating on average. And then if you're maintaining your weight, then that means that that is your maintenance. And you just want to reduce that by like 250 to 500 calories. You don't want to reduce it like too much. Uh, I wouldn't suggest reducing it more than 500 calories just because the bigger deficit you're in, the less sustainable it is because the more hungry you're going to be. So it is better to start off with the smallest deficit possible just to make it easier on yourself and more sustainable. Yes, you'll lose weight slower, but slow and steady wins the race of turtle on the hair, guys. But if you don't want to do that way, you can go onto calorie cal calculator apps. Like calorie, yeah, they're called calorie calculators. But the one that I like is TDEE calculator.net and you basically will go in there type in all of your like information like how active you are your height your weight and all of that stuff and then it will give you your calorie maintenance amount and then it also gives you what calories you need to like either bulk like gain weight or calories that you need to, to lose weight so you can just go off of them calories or take the maintenance calories and then reduce it by 250 to 500 calories and then just basically track what you're eating for a couple of weeks, a week or two. And if you lose weight, then that means you're in a calorie deficit and just carry on with that. And if you gain weight, then you're not in a calorie deficit, then you need to reduce your calories more. If you stay the same, you're not in a calorie deficit, reduce your calories more. But I will say probably give it at least two weeks to see whether you lose weight or not and then see, like then see what you wanna do with the calories. And you just basically do that until you start losing weight. And you wanna lose around one to two pounds a week. You don't really wanna be losing too much more than that. Obviously in the first week, when you start to lose weight, your weight will go down a bit more because you're going to be losing a lot of water weight, but then eventually it should steady out. And you don't really wanna be losing too much weight because like I said, it's not very sustainable. You're gonna be really, really hungry and you're less likely to stick to it and you're more likely to just give up. So it's better to do it very small and just make small changes. Obviously, when you enter a calorie deficit, you do want to be focusing on trying to do healthier habits. So you you will, like, the way to lose weight is to just eat in a calorie deficit. And it doesn't really matter what you're eating in the sense of you could eat just, like, pure junk food. And as long as you're eating in a calorie deficit, you will lose weight. But obviously, when you lose weight, you want to focus on your health. And the best way to do it is to prioritize whole foods, healthy foods, fruits, vegetables. But you don't necessarily have to completely cut anything out. It all does depend on you, what you want to do, your lifestyle, and what you prefer. So if you prefer to just cut out takeaways completely because you know that you won't be able to eat it in moderation, that's your business, you do that. Or if you feel like being able to incorporate... I don't know, a takeaway or a chocolate bar here and there will help you stick to your diet and be able to be a, a healthy lifestyle change, a lifestyle with balance, then you do that as well. Like I'm not here to tell anyone exactly how to eat. I'm just telling you that to lose weight, you need to eat in a calorie deficit. You want to prioritize your protein with every meal, try to hit about a gram to a gram and a half of protein per pound of body weight. And you want to just be, you know, eating healthily, eating fruits and vegetables, you don't you don't need to be scared of fruits. Fructose won't make you fat. It's not bad for you. Unless you've been told by a doctor that for your, for your specific health condition or for whatever reason you can't have it, then it's completely fine. Like, I don't understand the argument that fruits are unhealthy. Fruits are fruits. They've got nutrients. Eat your damn fruits. And yeah, just trying to be more active, going for walks. Walking is really good to lose weight. Like, literally just increasing the amount you walk, you'll be surprised at how much that helps just to increase your daily energy expenditure, how many calories you burn in a day. So aiming for about a 30-minute walk at least every single day is a good place to start. And then you can gradually increase and gradually get into exercise, find exercise that you enjoy. But that's, like, how you would lose the body fat. And you just need to stick to it as long as possible for your body to lose the body fat around your stomach, basically. No specific ab workouts are going to target it. I actually didn't do any ab training throughout my whole weight loss, basically. Other than the fact that I work my abs when I'm doing other work, like other exercises, like squats and deadlifts and all that, it does activate your core. But the last few months I have been doing some like abs, basically. So uh, at the end of every leg day, I do like a circuit of two, two circuits, basically, of like bicycle crunches. What are these called? Them ones. I forgot what they're called now, but them, you know? You lift your legs up and you hold a weight and you go like that. I forgot what that's called. <laughs> I can't think of it off the top of my head. And then I do like a plank twist 
and butterfly kicks and I do two sets of them basically I had like two circuits of them and that's it on the end of leg day so like twice a week I do it now really and truly that's just to build the muscle underneath you which you won't be able to see if it's covered in a layer of fat so you want to focus on just staying in the calorie deficit long enough for the fat to go and I know that's not what everyone wants to hear everyone wants to hear about like you know getting a waist trainer or cream or something that's like gonna make it go faster than what it will it, it just it just won't happen like that other tips that I can give you guys to give you an illusion of a smaller waist is to build muscle in your back like your lats and your shoulders because it will give you a wider like top half and then also like build up your legs and your glutes so then you get a wider bottom half so you've got wider there wider there and it will naturally give you that X frame. Like that's what they do in like bodybuilding, bikini girls, and all that stuff. So you want to get like the X frame. So like you come out here. So like guys, I've recently been accused of uh, photoshopping my photo. It was like a Skinny Food Co thing. Someone um, Skinny Food Co posted my picture on their Facebook page. And it got a lot of controversy. Apparently I uh, photoshopped my picture, which I didn't. And I even posted like the live of the picture so like you know on like iPhone when you take a picture it takes like a video and like if you press it down you've got the video you can actually save it so obviously I had to debunk it real quick yeah so I posted like the video of the clip but basically where I've got um like muscle upper body and when I'm posing which is a very like if you guys look at my pictures and stuff when I'm posed I'm not walking around like that do you know what I mean so when you have muscle here and like say you pose for a picture you like you like when I pose for pictures I flare my lats a little bit and like push out like much like see the difference and it like brings this out so this looks bigger and then when you pose you twist so like what I learned through bikini posing is you basically you contort your body and it's all illusions basically like the way you flex flex or engage your muscles should I say I want to say flex engage your muscles and stuff so you face like you learn how to like face your hips will face this way your stomach is there and then you basically twist your whole body and like your arch in your back as well and like you're like pulling in your stomach like that so it gives you the illusion of a very small waist and um obviously when i'm engaging my my thigh my quads and my glutes that looks like like bigger and then obviously in that picture that I was wearing, I'll put the picture here anyway, but in that picture I'm wearing like light leggings and the light of the leggings guys, I look completely, not completely different in light leggings, but light, where, when you wear light trousers, it makes your legs look bigger. Do you know what I mean? Like if I was to wear black, when I wear black leggings, it is more slimming. Whereas like light leggings, it just looks bigger. Do you know what I mean? So obviously where I'm wearing light leggings and I'm like posing, and I've turned my waist looks smaller um, and then this looks bigger so it makes the the top half and the bottom half they're quite big and then when you're posing as well it, even when you're not posing because this is bigger it just gives the illusion of a like a lot smaller waist because it's like bigger there bigger there smaller there you know what I mean but yeah because of that I got accused of uh, photoshopping which I didn't but thank you for thinking that it is photoshop that it cannot be real it's just good angles good posing muscle at the top and the bottom basically and yeah posing and angles um but yeah so my point of that anyway is that you to give an like obviously lose the body fat that's like the main thing stay in a calorie deficit long enough persevere stay consistent keep going make sure that it's a lifestyle change that you can stick to something that you enjoy do you know what i mean like not something that you think is going to take a couple of months like it could take a year or two years it could take a very long time depending on how much body fat you have to lose so staying consistent slow and steady wins the race losing the body fat there and then also to give uh, an illusion of a like if you wanted the small waist look it the secret is isn't to do loads of ab training because really and truly you can do abs it it does look nice like to have like some muscle tone there it's good to have a strong core i'm not like against training abs as long as you enjoy it i'm just saying that you don't necessarily have to do loads of ab training to have like a small waist or lose body fat there but also you don't want to do too much like ab exercises where you're doing the obliques and stuff like to because that can actually make your waist go thicker obviously if you want to do that you can but to have a smaller waist you don't want to build too much because it's muscle so it'll go thicker if you want like the uh, the illusion as well of like a smaller waist you would build up like your shoulders your lats and everything so that this comes out into the v taper and then obviously your glutes and your legs 
because then that comes out and then it gives that x-ray do you know what i mean so that's a little tip for you guys if you didn't know it gives you that illusion and then obviously when you're posing for photos you twist your body contort your body look at posing and stuff like bikini posing and that that's why i pose like that it just it shows off the hard work that you've been putting in like to build yourself up do you know what i mean like that's what posing is like especially like in bodybuilding and bikini and all that kind of stuff it's to showcase your work because you can do a lot of work in the gym and stuff you can look good but you can't properly properly showcase your muscles or your physique if you're not doing posing properly and even though I'm not like competing right now or anything I still took what I learned from the posing lessons and I'll do that in a picture but yeah and also I got said told that my hands deformed because my hand was holding the bowl and basically I don't know if I can show with my phone it's not really heavy but my hands um I've got like double jointed like I've got hyper mobility and yeah, so like when I was holding my bowl and I was holding it in my waist and I was twisted, the bowl was like heavy. So it made my hand go like that. And I think in the picture, they were trying to say that it looked like my hand was warped. Like, you know, when people Photoshop and they pull the waist in and it goes like that, the hand goes deformed, but my hand is just deformed anyway. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that doesn't actually look too bad. But my, but anyway, what I'm trying to say is, like, my hand just bends in random ways. So it just looks all deformed and stuff. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's how you lose belly fat. That's how I lost belly fat. Yeah, I'm sorry it's not a quick fix or anything. Slow and steady wins the race. You've got this, guys. It will eventually go. Some people will lose their belly. Some people have, like, really good genetics on their stomach. And they can carry body, body fat in their upper body and lower body and, like, be quite lean on their stomach. I'm not one of them people, I lose but my belly last basically, so, and especially like the lower but the belly, it could be quite stubborn, but yeah, just stay in the calorie deficit long enough, you got this, and you know, if you do want to lift weights and build up your body, definitely train your shoulders and your lats and your glutes and your, your quads and your thighs and everything, because in that way, it will give the illusion of that X-frame, which makes your waist look smaller, so. Hope that helped, if it did, I would really appreciate a like, and if you haven't already, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.